Hi everyone, it's Lisa Brown with inkandinspirations.com. Thank you for joining me for the YouTube premiere here on Thursday evening, August the 5th, 2021. And I'm so excited to be bringing you some projects using products from the new mini catalog from Stampin' Up. So we are gonna get started, but first let's cover a few things. If you are on YouTube, the evening of the 5th at 6 p.m. Central, you can log in to your Google or Gmail account so that you can participate in the live chat. And I would love to chat with you during the premiere. Also, uh, I love it when you comment and tell me what you think and um, just say hello and tell me where you're from. You can comment that, and if you can share the video underneath the video, there's a share button, and it chooses a place where you can share. In other words, a place that you can share it, and that really helps me. So on that note, I want to uh, share, share the um, winners from last week's uh, video. And so for commenting on the video, Cynthia Ford is going to get both of the projects that we made. Remember that fun fold, pop and twist? And then uh, for sharing, Joanne Porter is going to get this little peach pin, okay? So ladies, um, Joanne and Cynthia, if you will, message me or contact me with your mailing address so I can get those sent out to you. All right, so this week for commenting i'll be sending the projects that i make okay and then for sharing i have some holiday rhinestones that i'm going to be sending out so thank you so much all right now i think there is one more thing all right i have a special thank you gift this month through august 14th i, I call it my whimsical tree special thank you class so with any order from the online store or you can contact me to order that's over fifty dollars you're going to get the kits to create these cards using the whimsical trees bundle okay so i'm going to show you real quick the cards we have a pretty tag a fun fold another fun fold and another card okay and so you're going to get all those pieces cut and die cut you'll get the embellishments and um, you don't get the stamped images so if you want to order this bundle so you can complete them like i did you can do that or just order what you like and you can use something you have on hand to complete those cards now when you get your kit it will look like this with the envelopes and all the pieces inside Again, through August the 14th is when you have to place the order. Then I'm going to order the supplies I need to make all of the kits and get them ready. And I will have those shipped by August the 27th. On that date also, you will receive an email from me with a link to the project page, which will have video tutorials and some details and measurements for each of the projects, okay? So if you have questions about that, let me know. That's the Whimsical Trees Special Thank You class through August 14th with a qualifying purchase. Okay, so let's get into what we're going to work with first, okay? The first stamp set that I'm using is, let me get it. Oh yes, the Angels of Peace stamp set. I love these angels. Excuse me and these beautiful sentiments so we're going to be doing some watercoloring I'm going to be using watercolor pencils and some of our classic ink so let's get started now I gathered with a group of ladies the other day and we created that project and there are some things we tried and I'm going to tell you about those as we go along but I had seen uh, the card made with a white embossed angel okay so we, we tried it with white we tried it with um, metallic embossing powder 
I just really love the white. You could use any color embossing powder though, whatever suits your fancy. And, uh, but I'm gonna stick with the white. Now, can it be a little bit hard to see? Yes, but uh, what I have to tell you here is that your light, when it's shining down on your surface, and when you're watercoloring and using white as the outline, an embossed white, you get a little bit of a glare and that helps you see the image. And you're gonna see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. Okay, let's look at what we have to work with. We're going to go ahead and start with the watercolored piece, okay? And so I have a piece of our watercolor paper, two and a half by five. I'm gonna get some scrap paper here and maybe my silicone mat just to protect my work surface. And I also have a little bowl of water. I am using an, uh, one of our water painters, but for this particular project, I wanted to have a little bit more control over how much water I put down instead of when I squeeze it and maybe too much come out. So these hold water in the well and you get three of them with is it three i believe with uh different brush tips okay so on this one i'm using the narrow and i don't have any water in here but you can certainly unscrew that and put water in the well squeeze it the water comes out and you can watercolor in this instance like i said just using it as the brush but to emboss what do we need to do first we need to uh apply the image and use our Versamark ink, especially for this since we are going to be embossing in white. So I have this piece, I have my stamp, angel stamp mounted on a clear block, and I'm going to take the Versamark pad, keep that flat when you have a larger stamp, and it's easier just to apply the ink by patting over the stamp since the stamp is larger than the ink pad. That's usually a good rule of thumb to do this method. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna center it. This will be fussy cut out, so I don't really have to worry about if it's exact center. You could do this same card by centering it on this piece and using that for the element for the front of your card. But I wanted to cut it out so that beautiful designer paper is gonna show in the back. <clears throat> okay, so I have my white embossing powder, and now these come in, they're called the Basics Collection, and it's got white, let's see, here we go, it's got clear, black, and then the white in the package, and then we have a Metallics Collection that has copper, silver, and gold. So you can just order the two packs and get every embossing powder that you need for whatever. So you can see the embossing powder. See there, that beautiful angel. Okay, let me get my heat tool and we're going to heat that up. I'm gonna turn it on high and I'll have to talk a little louder. So I'm letting the heat tool heat up a little bit. I do have it on high. There's a one level and a two level, and I, for this case, I'm putting it on two. And now I'm gonna start heating that up. And it will start getting shiny, and the powdery look will go away. But you want to be sure and you get all of it embossed. So that when you start water coloring, or putting any kind of color to it, it won't brush away. Okay, so the look is changing. It gets a little shiny. You see that? Okay. Okay, so do you see how my paper is curling a bit? We're going to fix that a little bit. I'm going to turn it over and heat the back. And straighten out that paper a little bit. Okay, I think I have it. I'm looking for the shininess. Let's see if I can get that. See it shiny? Okay. Let's go with that. So now, 
I'm getting some ink here and I am using watercolor pencils and I have a variety here. I have the original colors plus I probably have a few that were from a kit one time. I don't have the second set but there's a second set of watercolor pencils. It's a little smaller than this and it um, it has some beautiful our beautiful colors in it. So I'm using the one that is Bermuda Bay and then a Pacific Point color and then Early Espresso. Okay. So let me close this up. This when we sold our clear amount, I mean our clean mount stamp cases, I used it to convert a case for my watercolor pencils. So what you could do now is if you had an old stamp case you could put the stamps in something else and then just make a, um, a case for your watercolor pencils. Okay, I think I'm going to sit down to color and check on the top. I believe I've got you centered and I can see that you can see what I am doing. Okay, so I'm gonna take the Early Espresso and very lightly color in through some of her hair. And I'm just putting very light strokes of color, okay? And I'm holding it up so that I can see the glare of the embossing, and it'll show me where to apply the color. So next, I'm gonna take one of our blender pens, and if you haven't tried this type of coloring, I encourage you to do so. It is probably, I believe, my first coloring method when I began as a demonstrator. I got blender pens and I've got the watercolor pencils. And it is very easy to do and great for kids and grandkids. So let me see, I'm just getting the brown and her little wavy curls. And the color doesn't have to be really all that even. even, even. Um, you know, we want some variance in the color of the angel, okay, of her hair. Okay, so I've got that done. I'm gonna scribble off, and that's gonna clear off the color that's on the edge of the blender pen. <clears throat> now I'm going to do her dress, and I really should have sharpened my pencil, but it will work. So again, I'm looking and holding my, I don't know if you can see, but I can see a little glare here. I'm gonna pour another light down and maybe that will help. Okay, and then I'm just gonna outline. I'm gonna follow the outlines. She's got long sleeves on. So I'm just going like that, following the edge of her dress, coming around <clears throat> and just following those lines of her dress. So the concept artist here, this the designer of the stamp, did us a really big favor putting all these lines in here <laughs> so we can color our beautiful angel. This would also be beautiful, color stamped in a memento black ink and colored with our blender, not blender, Stampin' Blends, and what I would do if you were using Memento Black, I would stamp off first so the black wouldn't be so harsh. And that's one of the main reasons I decided to use this method, is so that it would be very angelic looking and kind of glowing and not too, um, too harsh. But either way, it's fine. Um, all right, so now I have my blender pen again. There are two edges, okay? And there's some kind of special um, liquid in there that works well, and it's just fun. I mean, I don't know the scientific term of it, but I do know that it works. And you see how it's just blending the color? And just, I'm coloring over those lines, and just blending it in. Okay, I'm going. And I tried not to get all the way to the edge of her 
the outline of her dress, okay? Um, so that I wouldn't go over, but you know, that still happens too. And the fact is that we're still, or I'm still gonna fussy cut this out and it will work fine. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna blend. I don't want those lines to be too harsh. It's okay to leave it darker because it gives it some depth, okay, and some shadows. And like this part here, I'm gonna leave lighter, like the light is shining right there. Okay, and the bottom of the dress doesn't really have a, a line show the edge, so you just kind of blend that down, okay, like that. And uh, that just keeps it very soft looking, I think. Okay, I'm going over these lines again, blending that through so it's not a definite line but yet it is a darker area on the angel. I love doing this. I forgot to get do this other sleeve. Let's get some of that. So, uh, last week, my air conditioner here in the studio went out. Gosh, gosh, it got hot. And so, we got, we tried to fix it. Mm -mm. And Jackie said, we just need to get a new one. And so we did, and oh, it's wonderful. And I've got it where it cycles. I, I know you probably could hear it earlier, and it may come on again. But it is so nice. We That's such a blessing to have cool air when it's hot. I feel for all those who have to work out in the heat. Okay. So there's, I'm gonna leave my dress, her dress like that. And I'm gonna clear off my, okay. And these do dry out eventually, and so you just buy some more, okay? But they last quite a long time. Now I have the little bird she's holding and I decided to use the Pacific Point color. And really on this, uh, just two different colors of blue would do, you know, one, you don't want the, the bird to blend into her dress. So I tried to pick something that looked really different, but that would be a good color for her little bird. Okay, her hand is right there. It might have gotten some blue there, but isn't that cute? Okay, you see how we're going? All right, so now I'm going to switch from watercolor pencils and blender pens to ink. And that's because I didn't have a watercolor pencil that I was happy with for her wings and her face. So this is what I've decided. I've got a little bowl of water, like I said I used earlier. And I have pale papaya, which I'm going to use for her skin. And I'm gonna take this long block here and just tap my ink pad there. And that's probably way too much ink, so I'm gonna have to be careful not to get it where her, I don't want her face to look papaya, but I want it to look flesh toned. This is Blushing Bride, which is the color of our card base. And I'm putting that there for her wings. So I have a little color palette right there on my clear block. And I'm going to take my water painter and just dip it in. And then, okay, this is where I have to be careful. I'm coming over here where there is not as much ink, and I am putting lots of water here, okay? Let me get a Kleenex tissue. Show you what I do. Okay, I don't want too much water, so I'm dabbing it off, and I'm just gonna lightly go on her face. And you can see it's like bubbling up, okay? And then watch what I'm gonna do here. It's a clean tissue, dab up. Okay, see how it's just, it's just barely there. I think I need a little bit more, so I'm gonna try it again. It's, it's always better to add more color than to put too much to start with, okay? I got her neck and then her hand is over here. I have to hold my paper up. My, watercolor paper so that I can see 
the areas that need to be colored. I've got the glare. I don't know that you can see it, but I can, I've got the glare on my paper where I can see it really well. Okay, here we go. Dab and up. Okay, her hand needs a little more. I'm gonna get a little more color. Okay, I think I like that. It's barely there, but, and I may add some more in a minute. Uh, should I do it? Put a little bit more. I'm just layering the color, but when I put that tissue over it, 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 peel, it brings up all the water and really lightens it because see, that's pretty dark like that. So let's do it again. Dab and up. Okay, I'm gonna let, let that be. <clears throat> now I'm gonna dip into the water again and I'm gonna go over here to the Blushing Bride. Again, I don't want it too dark. I'm gonna use this for her wings. I had thought that I would just use Wink of Stella, but it needed a little bit of something. So this is just a little bit of hint of Blushing Bride that I'm painting her wings with. And I pulled away from this, this dab of ink, put over here, and then started adding my water there. Yesterday, when I was doing this, I got too close to the papaya. Then I had a kind of a mixture on the wings. But it's okay. I just think they needed a little bit of color. And it kind of, it's kind of, it does tie it into the rest of the card. Okay, so there we go. And so what I would do is I would let that dry. Okay, it needs to dry. And then I'm gonna take this and wipe that off so that I don't have a big mess. Let's put that aside. And now, okay, I'm gonna put her aside and I'm gonna show you the finish because I've already cut her out. And here she is. See how pretty that is? And I just cut around and made the edges kind of flowing at the bottom. And I think she looks really cute. And then I added Wink of Stella on her wings. Let me see if I can put a little bit more. Can you ever have too much Wink of Stella? Y'all, this is such a great tool. The little medium here. It just really adds to a project. Okay. So who all, did anybody watch uh, my Facebook Live earlier? Um, God willing, hoping that it's done and you enjoyed that. And it was a fall theme card. So, oh yeah. Okay, she's ready. I'm gonna set her aside, let that Wink of Stella dry. I'm gonna leave this where I can make another card later. And I want to show you the angel done in silver embossing. So you see it stands out a bit more. It is easier to see when you color, all right? But it just depends on what look you want. And this would have looked fine on the card too. But I just love the white embossed, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and put our card together. I'm gonna move this water out of the way. And let's see what we have to work with. Our card base is Blushing Bride at five and a half by eight and a half. And so I'm gonna take that and go ahead and fold that, meet those corners, and give it a good crease with a bone folder. That bone folder really makes a difference, doesn't it? All right. Next, I have a piece and this is the Whimsy, Whimsy and Wonder Specialty Designer Paper. This is what uh, my thank you class, this is the paper it uses in that class. And if this is cut four by five and a quarter, and I thought these snowflake flakes would be beautiful behind our little angel. And so I am gonna put that there, but first I wanna tie in another color 
and that's mint macaron. I didn't want to use Bermuda Bay because it's too, I think too dark for the so overall softness. So I decided on mint macaron and it, it blends in beautifully. And this layer is cut five and three eighths by four and an eighth. <clears throat> and that is going to layer underneath the designer paper there. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm hoping you get some ideas for holiday cards and Christmas cards as you're watching this. And you know that, you know, if you decide to use a different stamp set, you can still use the same layout, okay? So I cut that mint macaron an eighth of an inch bigger, and that's going to layer there. See how it, the this flushing bride would have gotten lost if I'd have uh, just glued that directly to the card base. All right, let's get this on here. Like that. <clears throat> and now I'm using one of these snowflakes from the wonderful snowflakes pack. Look at that iridescent. I think there are 24 that come in a pack. Just so pretty. And I'm going to put it right there. So I'm going to take my glue. This is a uh, liquid glue and these, this wonderful little fine tip container and it allows me to put the glue just a little less messy than using uh, the green and white applicator. Now our fine tip glue would work well here too. I am just very partial to our multi-purpose liquid glue. All right, let's put this down. It's like in the upper right here and you can see that iridescence against that designer paper. Look at that, how that picks up the light. Isn't that beautiful? Love that. Okay, so now, where's my angel? She's going on next, and I'm going to put her right there. So what I wanna tell you before I glue her down, if you wanted to make this just a girl holding a bird, you could totally fussy cut off the wings, okay? Just an idea and showing the versatility of our stamp sets. Okay, this is going to glue down right there. I think I'm going to go ahead and do it. Normally I would do the die cuts first, but I'm being brave. So I, um, we have guests uh, staying overnight tonight and tomorrow. And then uh, our youngest, Lindsay and Lila and Clara are coming to see us. And she had some time, and these friends that are here, this family, or were like the couple and the family that we did everything with when our girls were growing up. And we would always come here to the state park that's just outside, you know, our, our cabin is adjacent to that. Okay, see how I got that down? And <clears throat> she wanted to come while they were here because she hadn't seen them in a very long time. So she is, Jackie is going to get her and pick her up. He's such, speaking of angels, such an angel to go do that. Uh, she lives in Fort Worth. It's a good seven hour drive. He's going to get her and bring her back. So we're excited about that. All right, for the dies on this particular card, I use the Tasteful Labels. I use this one for Mitt Macaron to tie it into this layer here. And then I'm use, gonna, going to use this um, very detailed stitched edge circle. I love these dies. Okay, <clears throat> let's see. I've got this ready to go, but I need a little piece I cut it two and a half by three and a half. You just need a scrap piece of basic white, okay? So I am going to stamp and 
Let me get my sentiment. It says, blessings to you and yours this season and in the coming year. So that's what I chose for the outside. I'm going to stamp it in the macaron. Again, tying in that color. And I'm gonna put it right in the middle of this scrap piece, okay? So that I can die cut that out. Okay, while I have my stamp pad open, I have a piece of four by five and a quarter of basic white. This is for the inside of the card. Let's go ahead and stamp that while we have our ink pad open. So on this one, I chose peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And I'm hoping I get this straight on here. Let me test it. <clears throat> Stand up. Nope, it's kind of crooked. So this is what I do to line up. Put the clear block down, line it up on a grid sheet, look at the line up here, and line that up. I can see the grid lines through the clear block, okay? So let's try this again. See if I line that up. Yeah, okay. You have to look at the rubber and not the sticker uh, because the sticker, you know, user error. Well, no, oh, I, let me turn that over. I'm lining that up. I'm just going to put that. There we go. Okay, this is going to go on the inside of the card. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and put it there. And then we're going to die cut the little sentiment for the front and I'm going to use my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. We're going to add to that in a minute. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Okay. This. Don't want to lose that. Put this down. I need to get some new plates for this and I always forget to order things like that. I'm so gaga over the stamps and the papers. Okay, I've got that centered. Let's hope I don't have to redo it. I'm going to be brave and not put any post-its. So I'm squeezing down on the plates so that it doesn't move. I love this little mini machine. It's so easy to bring in and out. Okay. Ah, isn't that pretty? Okay. Let me put this die away so I don't lose it. And let's clear this. <clears throat> okay. So now we are going to put that here. This is going to go underneath. And then this centered over top. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Let's see. This is the back. You see how you can tell the difference? Look at that. See how it's not real defined? And then, see there? Although I have been known, and you probably know this, to flip it over if I mess up the front. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, let's put this on. Good liquid glue. I think I may, no, I didn't pop it up. This doesn't look straight. Let me there we go. <clears throat> Move that over a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to use some of these subtle simmer sequin sequins. Try saying that real fast. Okay, get this out of the way. Close up my ink pad. And I'm going to get my take your pick tool. You straight here. Hope that's straight. <clears throat> okay, roll this up a little bit. I think I need a refill for this putty. Okay, so I'm going to take a few of these. They're white and silver, and some of them are smaller than others. Okay, so I see. 
two small ones and I want to put those right here. Little gl glue, dot of glue. And I'm going to pick it up and dab it. Okay, I'm going to take this and press down a little bit. Okay, let's put one over here. Here's another little one. Oops. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and then I'm going to take three of the larger ones and just kind of scatter them up here. So one, put one there on the snowflake. That's a little bit too much glue. And one right here. Okay. These are really pretty. It was one of the the gifts from the incentive trip, I think. I thought these are different. They have little um, matte colored white sequins too, you can tell. I'll probably put that one upside down, but that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna try to be careful and let that set a minute. And then I'm gonna put some on the inside. <clears throat> Look at that shimmer and shine. Isn't that pretty? All right, <clears throat> let's see if I can get a few more. I'm trying to get a little one. Mm. Oh, there, mm, no. Oh, there's some like silver ones too. There's a little one. <clears throat> Sorry, I keep clearing my throat. I'm just getting over that allergy thing. Try to make like a triangle. Okay, let's put this one. Oh, come on. It's so tiny. Tiny but mighty. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's do some of the larger ones. Get off the struggle bus here. There's one, and here's one. Okay, so there is our first card. <clears throat> Plenty of room to write your message. Okay, what you think? I love it. I love all the shimmer and shine. You see what I mean about the angel in white? She looks like glowing and love that. Okay, let me clear. If you have questions, go ahead and post them now and I'll try to answer you. And I'm gonna get this out of the way. And the next thing we're gonna work on is a fun little 3D project because I am a sucker for pillow boxes. And I, when I saw that one in the catalog, I thought I have to have it. And so, let's see. <clears throat> or I may have gotten that. Yeah, I may have gotten that on the trip. I lost a sequin. Let me see right here. It's because I didn't finish the inside. Okay, so, so anybody is, um, are you having or thinking about starting your Christmas cards? I love showing you guys all of these and because it makes me get started, you know, and I know, okay, I want to make more of that one or I can only make a couple of that one, you know, depending on how involved they are. Okay, I'm going to put this aside and get my other project in here. Give me a second. Get the embossing powder out of the way. And I'll show you the, the die here, the pretty pillow box die. That's what we're going to be using. And I'm going to have to get my big, big shot in here to cut that one. Big shot. Stamping, cut, and emboss machine, Lisa. Okay. 
clearing the desk. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get that. Mm -hmm. I have these containers that have all of my supplies in them for each project. So here is the project. Look at that cute little pillow box. Isn't that cute? I love them, y'all, especially for this time of year. Okay. I am using this die, which is, as a matter of fact, in, in the gingerbread suite at one of the first ones at the front of the catalog. Let me show you. Here it is, pill box, right here and the gingerbread bread and peppermint sweet. Right there, it's got all these cute little tags and pieces. All right, here we go. So, I am using these two, and I wanna show you how you can do that in one swipe through the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. Uh, I'm using also this well-defined stamp set. I didn't look that one up ahead of time, sorry but it's in here. Well, I'll find it. Well defined. Page 62. Oh, right here. Okay. The well defined. I love those, uh, definition stamp sets. I still have my Define Your Life. Do y'all remember that? Wood block. I love it. I still use it. It's just sometimes so appropriate and the, the definitions for the words are beautiful. And these are fun too. Like the one for Halloween says, Halloween, when taking candy from strangers is good and dressing normally is strange. Don't you love that? <laughs> okay. We're gonna start off with a five and a half by eight and a half piece of old olive, okay? I'd use that to give myself plenty of room. You could probably get by with a smaller piece, but nah, it's just easy to cut that in half. Now, right here, you see this little scalloped? That's the little closure. I want this little eyelet going through that. <clears throat> And so I don't butt it up against the edge, okay? Uh, let's see. And when my friends were here the other day, Diana and Karen, I forgot to cut. I was cutting this for them, and I forgot to cut this cute little embellished part out. They were so sweet. That's okay, Lisa. Uh, okay, let's run it through one swipe okay you can put it in there and cut it and there are different ones too that you can use i'll show you i like this one because i'm going to put some red cardstock beneath it okay i can leave that okay see here it is i'm going to punch all these little kibbles and bits out and sometimes on certain dies I leave some of those in I just think it's kind of fancy looking kind of original okay so see it cut that out <clears throat> now I have a scrap piece of red and it's to cut poinsettias and the little um, this little piece here Okay, so I'm going to get, I think I can use the mini and run this through. <clears throat> All right, throw that away. And we're going to put that on here. And then you can take these little poinsettias and die cut 
like that. Line those up and we're gonna run those through at the same time. I believe that's what I did. Where's my, yeah. Okay. Let's run it through. Jackie, would you make that air come on again, please? Kind of turn it down. I have it on, um, you know, where it cycles, but. All right, so I have my little flower there. And then this little tag. Might have to switch it to cool, Jackie, on the moat. Oh, there you go. Thank you. All right. Let's see. I'm getting my dies put back in the on the magnet so I won't lose them. Okay. So now we have three pieces here we're going to work with. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to cut it a little larger than half. Okay. So I'm going to come down a little bit here and cut. It's better to cut it too much, leave too much, than to not, not cut it large enough, okay? So you see right there, you can see the little red through there. And so I am going to, I'm going to wait because you have to mess with this quite a bit. So let's go ahead and fold on these score lines. And I was telling my team last night, I had a crafting chat on Zoom with my team. And with this die, when you have curved score lines, <laughs> you gotta hold your mouth just right to get it. <laughs> so, but it is so cute. And also, I've tried this with designer paper, and it wasn't, it didn't have enough body with the designer paper I chose. Let me show you. It did okay, but it was like, it's, to me, it wasn't sturdy enough. You can try it. It's, it's still cute if you're putting something very light in there, okay? All righty. All right, so I'm getting all of these. curvy lines, score line there. Okay, so then this, this is our going to be in the front. So I want these two pieces are going to go over top of that. And then I'm going to adhere it like that. Now with a pillow box, you don't always have to adhere the front to the back because of the way it's made. Okay, but I, I would if you want it to be like this and it's open and then the little trinket or gift come out, okay? For this particular one, I'm not going to adhere it because I'm going to send this in the mail to the winner of the comments, okay? So, and that's a random draw, by the way, prize wheel kind of. And so, anyway, just know that on the other, the one that I made here, I put Stampin' Seal Plus underneath and glued that like that, okay? But I'm also gonna put now a little closure there. So if you didn't, it would certainly hold it together. But first, I want to put this piece. So I'm going to take some liquid glue Let's see how I'm going to do that. I'm going to put it like on this edge right here. Then I'm going to take this and look at it and line that up. We want the red showing through those little cut holes and line up those scallops like you can. Okay, that's super easy. So the trick there is when you cut this, cut it m more than half. Give you enough room to put glue right here, okay? All right, so now <clears throat> let me show you my closure. I had some Velcro dots, okay? 
and they were like, let's see, they were like half inch, three quarter inch dots, okay, and wide. And so I cut it in half. I cut one circle in half. And what I did, I took them both and I put them together, the loopy side to the, um, you know, fuzzy side. And I'm gonna put this right here in the center, like that, the sticky side up. And then I'm gonna bring this over and press it down a little bit. And then you have to be careful when you pull it apart because it'll come up like that. So I'm gonna press down again. I, I needed to press on the bottom as well. Okay, I just press the top. And normally I would have this glued so it would be staying together. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna press. And then I'm gonna try it again. And what I did yesterday when I was making this, I, um, I put some more adhesive underneath that. But see, isn't that cute? Okay, there's the closure. This would be, if you like, adhered together on the sides. And then we have that. Okay, so now let's finish it up. <clears throat> All right, let me get, I have some of the ruffled edge ribbon. Okay, and then you would need a scrap. They have this little tag. See that little tag right there? That's the one I cut out of basic white. And then I'm using the to and from, from the well-defined set, okay? To and from. I was looking for one, I thought, oh, there's one. So that's awesome. And this, do you see how crooked that looks? Well, I, it's struck, I lined it up. This stamp is touching this stamp on the block and we're going to be very optimistic and stamp this on this tiny tag. Okay, so let me let me see if I got this. Yep, see how that's pretty pretty doggone good. Let me see. Nope. I need to keep it straight like that. Mm -mm. There we go. Okay, let's keep that there. And then I'm going to take that little poinsettia flower that I cut out. Put it on the wrong side. I'm just putting a little dot in the middle and putting it right up here on the edge. Come on, stick. Okay. Then I'm going to use one of our holiday rhinestones. <clears throat> I'm using one of these uh, goldish curry ones. Let's see, where's my take your pick? It's disappeared. Let's use this one. We let that sit for a minute and now let's work on our bow. I cut about 10 to 10 inches of this ribbon so that I could tie a bow easily and not be on the struggle bus. Okay, here we go. Okay, pull those little edges down. Pull, pull. And then we're going to trim these edges. All right. Then this is going to go up here and I'm going to use a glue dot or two to attach it. 
and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to attach the tag. I'm going to attach the tag around one of these tails. So I need my linen thread. I'm be a little generous and I can just always cut the ends off. This is not linen thread. It looks, I meant to grab the linen thread, but this looks like a, the twine that's in that basic essentials twine. It, it works too, but linen thread is, is what I had on the original. So I'm gonna take this, I looped it through that opening in the tag. Then I'm just gonna tie this in a knot around one of the tails of the ribbon. Goodness, come on, Lisa. Okay. So, does anyone, uh, now that the catalog is live, what's your favorite in there? It's hard for me to pick a favorite. I do like the whimsical trees. I mean, I, I really like that. And when I first saw it, I thought, oh, I'm usually a more traditional Christmas color person. But that is awesome. And it makes some beautiful cards. And as I showed you earlier, with the free thank you class with a order over $50 from me through the 14th of August. I did, I used that bundle, Whimsical Trees, with traditional colors. So you can, you can do that and just use other paper. Okay, you see I'm going to just cut these ends off like that. And you can cut them pretty short if you knot it. Okay. So there is that project. Fun, fun. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way and now we're gonna make a fall themed project. So let me clear this. Ask any questions. Comment with what your favorite is in the holiday. I, I, Y'all, I, I can't get away from calling it the holiday catalog. You know? <laughs> so. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's get the, let's do a fall theme project. And there's my linen thread. Here is this one. And it is done with the sparkle of the season bundle. Look, I use the um, brushed metallic gold that's carried over from last year. Isn't that pretty? Okay. We are ready. Let's see. <clears throat> so let's see what we need. I'm going to move this because those words are bothering me. <laughs> All right. Let's get you straight again. It doesn't matter how much I try, it seems like when I watch the recording of the video, it's like cattywampus. Okay, so the Sparkle of the Season bundle is this stamp set, and it is on page, let me find it for you. right here, page 58, okay? And you can kind of overlook it, it's gorgeous. The dies are beautiful, the coordinating dies. And what's great about this one is that it has Halloween, Christmas, Thanksgiving, thankful, or just a thank you, okay? So today we're making one that says grateful. And I probably forgot to, where's my sample? No, I have the ink. Okay, so let me get this. I think I 
Where's my grateful? It's probably here. Forgot to mount my stamps. Okay, so I'm gonna take grateful and mount it right there. Love this photopolymer. When I saw this set, I thought, I love the wreaths. And so that's just worked out really great for me because I like stamp sets that you can use for several different occasions. Okay, now that I've got my act together here, I've got some of the die cutting done to save a little bit of time. And let's get started. You have a Cajun Craze base, five and a half by eight and a half. Let's go ahead and fold that and score it with a bone folder. Do any of you make uh, Thanksgiving cards or fall themed cards? I love it because we can use the, the grateful, you know, <laughs> for thank you card. Okay, so next I have a piece of crushed curry, four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And that's gonna be that first layer there. Then I'm using some In Good Taste in this light wood grain, In Good Taste designer series paper from the annual catalog, four by five and a quarter. And so we are going to go ahead and layer these up. Okay, this one goes on the crushed curry. Normally, I had been cutting my cardstock like if the designer paper is, like I would do four by five and a quarter for this layer and then three and three quarter by five for the designer paper layer. But I like that eighth inch, well actually it ends up being a sixteenth of an inch border but it's cut it an eighth inch larger than the one below it. Okay, there's that. Now, here are the two leaves. You need about a four by four piece to die cut these wreaths. And so I cut one in soft suede. Look how pretty and delicate. And this one in the one of the brush metallics, okay? So I put the metallic on the bottom. I'm trying to see how I did. I think I did it like this. Not that it matters, okay? But I'm just looking here at these two leaves here and this little one right there. So let's go with that. So here again, I'm just gonna put a little dot, smidgen of glue behind the leaves and hopefully that will hold it down. Anytime you can add a metallic to a card and it be subtle, and these brush metallics are great for that. Did I end up doing that? Not like I wanted here. Um, because they're not that sh real shiny. You know, it's muted and beautiful to cards, and they have three different shades of metallics in that. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's do the soft suede and these cut out really easily by the way <clears throat> now this one i don't want to put it on the same i want the leaves to be uh to all show i don't want to cover up the metallic leaves so i kind of turn it a bit so that they're not all lined up and again just some little glue so let's see how I want to do this. I'm going to go with that. Press down on those points where you know you put the glue. Okay. So it's coming along. And now I have die cut some little leaves that right here, I have them in this little container. 
and the pumpkin. So I've used pumpkin pie, crushed curry, and Cajun craze. And you see how they have these little leaves? They cut two at a time, which is awesome. That, here's the little pumpkin. And then there was another, oh, this one. Okay, so those are the dies I used. And so first I kind of decided where I wanted the pumpkin and I knew I wanted over here on this side because the sentiment was going to be on this right side. So I'm gonna go ahead, place that there, and then I want two of these leaves coming from behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and put these two down. And I'll try not to cover up the other leaves. Here's a Cajun craze. Okay. Oh. And then let's put the pumpkin. Okay. Hold that down a second. And now what I did is I put um, the leaves, the other two, a Cajun craze and a crush curry. Just kind of scattered them around the wreath. I asked a question, I think it's on my Facebook page or my Instagram about what do you like to craft with for fall? Leaves, pumpkins, or woodland animals? So you can answer that question here too, I'm just interested to know. Do you like fall leaves, which I would call this mainly a leaves, there's just one pumpkin, or pumpkins or woodland animals you know squirrels deer you know okay i'm doing that and then here I, let me get another i need a crush curry one i i think my favorite is leaves Do that. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna put some more down here. So see what you do is you go ahead, you decide your colors that you're going to use and then just cut a bunch of the leaves so that you can have that to work with, okay? And then you don't have to use all of them, just save them in a little container like this or a little Ziploc for when you make your next card. Okay, there we go. So now, let's let that dry a bit. I have a one half inch by five and a half inch strip. You don't really need this long, but it's in case I make a mistake. <laughs> um, crushed curry, I'm gonna line that up. I have the grateful stamp ready to go. And I'm gonna ink this up in, uh, Cajun craze and stamp it not too close to the edge. Okay, there's grateful. And so now what I'm going to do is just cut off one end close to the G and then angle this one up. Bam. Okay. And that's going to go right there. You see how that just comes all together so pretty? Okay, so this one I used uh, dimensionals. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use the minis because I have them right here. Okay. So be sure if you um, aren't on my Facebook page to go over there and 
like it so you can see I try to do a live of some sort on Thursdays at noon and then of course my premieres or Thursday evenings here on YouTube so much fun all right and then I have I believe I pre-tied yeah I did a loopy bow with linen thread and I'm going to put that right here okay so let me get a glue dot put that behind the knot come down here okay and then I think I'm going to trim some of this a little bit there's that and now for the inside of the card I have a piece of basic white four by five and a quarter and I am going to stamp this sentiment um, I don't think that's the one I wanted it is may the sparkle of the season warm your heart and home and I'm going to stamp that in soft suede Move that ink out of the way. That. Then I have two leaves left. So guess what? <laughs> Let's just put them right on in there. Oop. I wanted it over here. And then this little Cajun craze leaf right here I'm afraid to get too much glue and then I'm not putting enough okay there we go and if I had another leaf cut which I don't I would put it up here in the corner okay so let me go ahead and I'll try to do that later and I've got some glue that I'm going to have to deal with and so I'm going to use an adhesive remover to get that off later but for now let's finish the card and let's see oh there we go oh wait one more finish and touch makes a difference it's the, what are these called? Brush Metallic Adhesive Dots. And I'm using these right here, not these brighter gold, okay? Uh, I guess I could, but I'm gonna stick with what I had there. So let's see, I'm gonna use a large one, smaller one, and then a large one down here. See there? Just finishes that up nicely. Okay, let's let's get out. See if I can get all the projects in here. There's the one. And then here are the other two. So thank you so much for joining me for this. Uh, launch of the new mini catalog I've enjoyed sharing with you thank you for commenting and for those of you that shared I appreciate it remember I do have a special thank you class if you place an order of over $50 from me you can either call email me or place it in the online store the links and the de will be below the video here and you can also find the links of and the details for these cards on my blog later on this evening okay so the whimsical trees class order by august 14th order over 50 dollars before shipping and tax and you will get the kits to make for beautiful projects okay let me know if i can help you with anything and i will see you again next week have a great evening take care bye bye